What up, this is Day Deuce. I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastards. Hey, hey. All right, so we got Day Deuce jumping off the porch with us today. What's happening? What's happening? Man, I'm feeling great. How you feeling today, man? So I'm all right. Not enjoying this weather, you know, it's raining like a motherfucker. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> you good, man. All right, <laughs> uh, go ahead and introduce who else you got sitting behind you today, too, man. Um, my brother, JJ, you know what I mean? It's all traveling. My little brother, he an artist, too blessed. My right hand man, Mo Skrillet. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what's good, man. It's my team, all trap money. Okay. So, so what else you got shaking here in Atlanta, man? What else you got planned? Um, next, I uh, got a, uh, we basically doing like a promo run, um, do a bunch of interviews. I got a uh, feature with um, Sorry the Kid, um, Pee Wee Longway, and um, whatever else, get my music popping out here. Okay. I got a um, bigger ranking next. Um, new Music Monday, DJ uh, Coalition DJs. Yeah. So, so you yeah. out here working, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From um, what the 27th to the second. Okay. Second, so I just try to keep stay busy. You know I mean? No, absolutely, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do you like working here in Atlanta compared to back at home in Vegas, then? Um, here in Atlanta, this this is actually my third time coming out to Atlanta. As far as with music, um, I watched my partner, you know what I mean, like a little blueprint, like what to do when you come out here and get set some interviews up. And I mean, here is way different from Vegas though. Vegas is, we working on our culture, you know what I mean? But out here, this is Black Hollywood, you know? So here in LA is like meccas of up and coming hip hop, you know what I mean? So. Mm. I, 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 I personally want to come out here and I feel like you got to push your music coming from about like on the West Coast we don't get a lot of um, it'll be like let me like on the West Coast we don't get a lot of shine as much as down here you feel me like so you I feel like you have to come here like here in New York LA these are mandatory spots to mm -hmm. push your music you know what I mean Especially if you're doing like grassroot trapping, like from yeah. the, you know what I mean. Like you gotta come out here and get your shit spit in the in the club. You gotta come do these interviews. You gotta come get your name known. Vegas, they don't really cater to hip hop. You know what I mean. We don't got you out here. We don't got too many. You know what I mean. People that's pushing the hip hop scene in Vegas. So that's the difference. Of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I feel that, man. Yeah. So outside the music, what's life like in Vegas, man? Because, you know, we think of just the strip, but we know there's a whole nother side of um, Vegas, right? Yeah, no, it, 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 people think, think of just the strip, but, like, in Vegas, that's what they think. They think we live in casinos, like, you know what I mean? They think we, they think they just see the lights, you feel me? So, like, besides, like, we got, Vegas is a dog eat dog city, you feel me? Like they, like basically, like if you, it could break you or make you. It'll eat a motherfucker up that don't got no discipline. You feel me? So that, that like, like where I'm from, I'm from the west side of Las Vegas. So like, it's, that's where they pushed all the black people when we couldn't go to the strip. You feel me? So a lot of, like historic West Side black, you know what I mean? That's where it like all started. That's the hood, you know what I mean? West Side and North Town, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So like um like it's 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 a whole nother life. Like you know what I mean? Like that's why we working on our culture. It's not the city only been up for what, almost fifty years or something. Yeah. It's not like here. This motherfucker probably been up for like what, a hundred, you know what I mean? This is this is a culture city, you know what I mean? Like it's working on our culture, but we do got a lot of artists coming from out of Vegas and you know what I mean? It's like, it's just like anywhere else, shootings, 
pimp, well, not y'all, there ain't a lot of pimping and hoeing out here, but you know what I mean? There's a lot of pimping and hoeing going on. There's a lot of pimping and hoeing going on, though. you feel me? But that's how it is, though, like, you feel me? It's, just, it's a whole nother ball game. Yeah. Once you get behind, get from over the past the lights, you feel me? I got you, bro. Mm-hmm. So at what age would you say you jumped off the porch then? Mm, me, I jumped off the porch probably, I came from California, so like I'm kind of like half, half from Vegas, half from California. I'm from Vegas, but I jumped off the porch in Vegas, so you okay. know what I mean? So I moved to Vegas probably like 12, 13. 13, 13, 14, as I jumped off the porch, you know what I mean? Just, you know what I mean? It's just consider what you, what you say is jumped off the porch. Like, what do you consider that is jumped off the porch? Yeah, so we just say like, when you finally got out there and realized what life really was by yourself, man. Mm. Well, yeah, cause you know, just, you could jump off the porch as a young nigga doing just hood shit, you know what I mean? Just being in an environment you grew up on, you jump off the porch doing bad shit, robbing shit, you know what I mean? Like, it's jumped off the porch to get some money, though. Like, that's that's a little bit different, you feel me? Like, I jumped off the porch to get some money probably like 16, 16, 17. And that's when I, you know what I mean, was like, okay, I gotta have some bread, you know what I mean? And to, to fund myself, you know what I mean? Moms ain't gonna do everything. And I'm the oldest, I'm the oldest uh, out of all my siblings. So I have I always been a leader, like always been able to take care of my people, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like I, all my siblings is like younger than me. Um, and I just bred, that just made me more of a go-getter, more of a, more pressure. You know what I mean? I adapt to pressure. A lot of pressure been on me since, since I was a young kid, you know what I mean? So, like off the porch, like I feel like in Vegas, you motherfuckers jump off the porch early out there, just on how the city is. It's fast, you know what I mean? It's fast. We're gonna get some money though, for sure. <laughs> you gonna jump off the porch and get some money for sure. I feel that. Mm -hmm. And you had to go sit down uh, back in 2016? Yeah, that was my. Um, no, 2016, that was my second time in a pen. My first time in a pen was 2000, uh, damn, 2008, I'm gonna say 2008. 2008, um, I caught an um, undercover sale, or intent to sell shit on the strip and shit. And that was my first bid. I went and did like a year or two, two years on that. And then the second time, uh, I was an ex felon, ex felon with firearm. That's, that's in 2016. Okay. 2016, I did like two and a half on that. Oh, but like in Vegas, like we was just talking about that shit. In Vegas, they had seen you. We don't really got like a YA program out there. So at the time, you know what I mean? Everybody that was, um, you know what I mean? This gangs in Vegas. You know what I mean? A lot of they don't think it is, but it's a lot of. A lot of gang activity out there. Not as much as LA, but it's a lot. You know what I mean? And at the time in 2000, 2000, um, 2000, the early 2000s, the the court system was tearing youngsters up, like shootings, anything shootings, because we got what you call uh, hybrid gangs out there, basically like a clique of. Uh, you could be a blood. He could be a crib. He could be. Um, nothing or whatever, and y'all just click up and y'all make one click, basically. You know what I mean? And they they put it on um, History Channel, hybrid games with the whoop. So the clicks, when the clicks and shit started coming up in Vegas, they was tearing our ass up. So high school, like the court system was two to fifteen off the dribble. Oh, first wow. case, first case, put him up, put a youngster right in. Um, he'll be in fucking. And they send you right to the pen, fresh out of high school, certify you, because we don't got a YA program like that. You know what I mean? They quick to certify your ass. Certify you, boop. You be 16 on the yard with a 40-year-old. You silly be a 40-year-old nigga with 40 to life. So when I got to prison in 2008, it was like, 
like a high school reunion. Oh, and, you know what I mean? Fresh out of high school, the niggas that didn't go to college went right to the pen. Like, they stopped being so harsh in the court system now, but back when I went that first time, it was rough. You know what I mean? Like, it was rough. But, you know, I'm, it's, 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 it's like out there. And I, I caught my case on the strip, so. Any cases on the strip, they, they ain't playing. Huh? They not playing. Yeah, they not playing. My boy, my boy, one of my partners got a, um, he got a shooting on the strip. They stretched him out two fourteen to two fourteen to thirties, uh, fifteen to thirties, bow legged. So that's consecutive. So you know what I mean, right? Consecutive. You know what I mean? You gotta finish that. Do that sentence. And start the and next. Said, one. Do the second one. So and that was his first case. Certified. Certified. He was. We was in the 11th grade. He was a year older than me. He didn't get out until he didn't get out until probably a year ago. That was in 2003. Oh, so he did all did all that time. Like you know what I mean? And I caught my case on the strip. But luckily, I I only had an intent to sell. But the strip is like. You know what I mean? You go out there, you don't know what could happen. Like you could make a million, you could you could make a million dollars. It's Vegas. It's lucky. You know what I mean? You might get lucky and be able to bust a fade for sell. You know what I mean? Bust an eight ball fade for like five hundred. Take that five hundred, put it on roulette, and boom, you didn't won motherfucking uh, you won motherfucking fifteen thousand in one night. And you just just from being out there on the strip, you don't know who you are gonna meet. It's you know what I mean? That's one thing that's cool. That that little strip of ours is hold a lot of power. Like you know, I didn't realize it until I got older. Like this one little ass street, it's not even that big. You know what I mean, that one street, like funds our whole damn near state. Yeah. You know what I mean, so, and you meet millionaires. You know what I mean, motherfuckers out there. But yeah, people all over the world going. All there. over the world, all type of different bitches, all type of different. You don't know who you could be next to playing. I was, I was fucking, eighteen. I was, I just turned eighteen when I cut my case. But I was eighteen gambling, and so out there gambling. You know what I mean? Addicted to that shit, shooting dice. You know what I mean? Not even knowing what I'm, not even know, uh, not even knowing what I'm doing. You feel me? Like not even knowing that, I, blowing my money, going back outside, bust another, make another sale, go right back to the casino, shoot, you know what I mean, be out there to 12, be out there to 10 o'clock the next morning, walking and shit, and just like, like it's just a strip life. Like, you know, people don't see that underground strip life, like Vegas, that, you know what I mean? Only homegrown motherfuckers really know, like, this is our, this is a million dollar street, a billion dollar street. So, you know what I mean? People come in for party favors, you know how it goes. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But it is, it is what it is, you know what I mean? I love Vegas though. And weed is legalized out there now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you walk up and down the strip, you smell nothing but gas, gas everywhere. You know what I mean? Nothing but gas. Back when I, I, I was selling weed, that's what I went to the pen for. For real? Yeah. That's wild. How yeah. wild is that? Yeah, I went to the pen for um for for making a, a dub, a, a little ass dub sack sale. Took off running on their ass. The motherfuckers fucking fucked me up. <laughs> fucked me up too. Over there, little ass dub sack. <laughs> Can they clear that off your record now? Now that it's legal? Um, or? I don't know. They probably they probably can. I don't know. I don't know. They probably can, but they, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. As far as that, but they they don't be tripping on weed no more. Yeah. Yeah, they're not worried It's about another that. billion dollar industry for yeah. them, huh? Yeah, they making bread out there off that shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so get into the music. When did you first start rapping? How'd you get into it? Mm. Um, I, I always, um, I, I started rapping like, in high school, in high school, in the cafeteria, you know, ciphers and shit, you know what I mean? And uh, I grew up around like, when motherfucker had to have real bars and shit back in the day, you know? So, um, like I used to just rap in the cafeteria da -da -da -da, with the homies and shit. And then I started taking, like, 
I didn't start taking it really serious, but I always took it serious. I just didn't think I, I had the capability of making it. All right. You know what I mean? Pushing myself like that. So um, I started rapping with one of my boys. I didn't hit the studio to to like, I was like 16, 16, like really hearing myself on the track, you feel me? Mm -hmm. And um, it's difference. It's a big difference between knowing how to rap and then you know, like, it's different between me rapping in front of you than me going in the studio making a record, yeah. you feel me? So that's what I had to learn. What I had to, I, over time, I learned how to do that master, exercise my voice and shit, but I always knew how to rap since just smoking weed, getting high, rapping, you know what I mean? I always knew how to rap, right? But it's different when you go in there and make that song, you feel mm -hmm. me? So. But I didn't start taking it serious till I got out the pen the second time. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? But pen, the, the pen helped a lot with with my craft. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I I always was a, write, was a writer as a, when I first started off, you know what I mean? And then um, when I got to the pen, I ain't had nothing to do anyway. So I just made that as part of my routine, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, rapping. And wait, writing raps and then beating on the wall and then, mm, 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 you feel me? Just like off the door and shit. So um, once I learned how to like, you know, exercise my voice, like the penitentiary helps. It could, that shit helped me. Some motherfuckers, you know what I mean? It's all on how you utilize it. You feel me? All on how you utilize your, your time in there. And I, I worked on my craft like the whole time, yeah. whole time. But the second time I did too, you know what I mean? But when I got out the second time, um, one of my boys, uh, my boy Yada, he got signed to MMG. So mm -hmm. the, like me being close, closer to the industry, I, I started feeling it more. And then they started, I could see like, okay, I can, I, he could do this, I could do this, you know what I mean? So that's what, what really got me, got, to, got me taking it serious as far as that. I got you. Mm -hmm. So what was it like touring with him, Rick Ross, and Wale? Um, mm, um, shit. Shit, man, I, I ain't gonna lie. That shit was like, that shit was like a once in a lifetime experience to me. Like, you know what I mean? I know I'm probably more tours is ahead of me, but Ross, Ross, the first Ross, well, I went on Port of Miami 2 tour, then I went on uh, Wildest Crazy Tour, back to back, but uh, Ross Tour, Ross Tour was, i always been a fan of Ross, so, like, that shit was crazy, like, you know what I mean, like, waking up every day, like, I really got the full f feel of the tour life, you know what I mean, waking up every morning, boom, have to go, then showtime, boom, boom, it was like, um, uh, what's that show, uh, I mean, what's that documentary, um, uh, rock the mic tour. Okay. You know yeah. what I mean? That's how I, I was. The only thing that was different was we didn't have the tour bus. We was in a we was in a van and shit. We was in a van and we was catching flights from different little states. But it's it, it was cool, like getting in front of all them people. You know what I mean? Being able to control it helped me with my stage presence. Being able to control the crowd. You know what I mean? Um, Control the crowd, like uh, fucking. We're waiting for Ross to come out. Ross giving me the microphone. You know what I mean? Let me shine. Wale, while I ain't gonna lie, like Wale tour was more turned up. Ross tour was, you know what I mean? He, he an OG, so it was cool. Ross tour, don't get me wrong, it was great, but Wale shit was more lit. It was more, you know what I mean? More lit. Hella motherfucking bitches, cause you know he catered to the bitches and shit. But Ross, he had like more trap niggas, and mm -hmm. you know what I mean. It was the turned up crowd, but it was still you know what I mean. Ross got hits too. I actually see, seen you know what I mean. Be, when both of them perform, like you actually get to see their whole catalog and how they how they run their shows, how to do things. You know what I mean. I picked up a lot of shit from that. You know what I mean? Like, motherfuckers would give to be to be able to hit the tour with Ross and, you know what I mean? I fuck with, um, 
Gunplay too. Gunplay, okay. gunplay, my boy. Gunplay, my boy. I, I was with him almost every day. Gunplay, he, he a real nigga, like real nigga. I actually made it on Gunplay album. His upcoming yeah. one. Yeah, his upcoming one. Okay. So like, and Gunplay, he he he, you know, he been through all this shit. So I picked up little shit from him. You know what I mean, like he he was wild. He. And I just seen like the love he had for Ross, like, you know what I mean? Ross gave him, like he had another chance with Ross, you know, Gunplay was going through a bunch of shit, you know what I mean? So he gave him a chance and that boy showed up and I picked up a lot of shit from Gunplay, like he, how to, how to hit the stage with him and shit, but I was rocking with that nigga the most out of, out of everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he put me on his album, so, you know what I mean? That's love right there. That's love, for sure, for sure. I was trying to do a feature with him, and he ended up liking the song so much. <laughs> he kept it for yeah, his album? Yeah, he kept it for his album. <laughs> me, and, me and my boy, uh, Tony Ma, Free Tony, as a matter of fact, you know what I mean? Oh, that's dope. Yeah, yeah he kept it, uh, he liked the song so much that, you know what I mean? That's what, I was, I was, he was doing the feature, for the F anyway, but just because he fucked with me. So he like, man, let me keep this for my album. I'm like, it's good. I'm like, for yeah, sure. Can't complain with that. Yeah, 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 put that motherfucker on there. That's what I was like, go ahead, bro. No, that's mm -hmm. dope, that's dope. So, mm -hmm. so what can you tell us about your upcoming single with ESTG? Um, ESTG, man, that shit, first of all, like, ESTG, I've been listening to that nigga since I feel like, honestly, I feel like I was the nigga that brought ESTG, like, brought, like, <laughs> like put everybody on his music in, yeah. in, uh, in Vegas, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I put, I put niggas on that nigga, like, niggas wasn't listening to that nigga, like, um, like, my single, Address It, with him, is called Address It, and the beat by Forever Rolling, mm -hmm. and, like, when I first heard that nigga, I was like, like, I was listening to that nigga in like 2018, at least, like 18, 19. Man, like 19, 19, 19. I'm tripping, I'm tripping. Yeah, 19 for sure, 19, 20 for sure. But um, I put my niggas on him, I put my niggas on him. I'm like, this nigga hot, bro. I'm like, this nigga gonna blow, bro. Like, I'm telling you, I'm boom. And um, I hit his people. I hit his. I told myself. I said, I'm gonna get a feature with this nigga. I could hear the pain. Like when you off the porch. Like I ain't even gonna say off the porch. When you outside and you 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 a street nigga. Like for real, for real. A lot of street niggas can relate to a lot of just from being from the hood. But when you really playing in the game, you know what I mean. Like really playing ball and a nigga rapping about it, you could you could hear it. Like this shit give you chills and you could relate to it. Like a street nigga could relate, uh, some street niggas could relate to just street shit, of course, yeah, but when a nigga get to talking to numbers and certain little situations and shit, it, 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 it touch a, a real trap nigga, real dope, dope dealing ass nigga, like, you know what I mean? Like, it touch you and nigga, you can hear, like you can hear the pain and give a nigga chills. That's cause a nigga been through that shit, you know what I mean? So. And when I heard Kes, I heard I heard that all in his all in his voice. And his cousin, his cousin, like my nigga Sean Nola, shout out to him, that's my nigga. Um, he the one, me and him like clicked, clicked. I hit his people, I hit um ESTG people on Instagram, boom. And um they like, man, um, feature, you know what I mean? I ain't gonna put the numbers out there and shit, but it was for a good amount, boom. And then um, he come out, he come out to Vegas for uh, for money bag yo um, birthday mm -hmm. when um, when that shooting happened and shit. Oh, Remember yeah, that? Yeah. Okay, so he come out there and boom, we meet at the air, we meet at uh, money bag yo Airbnb. He got all his niggas with him, and I could tell like that the nigga was about to get signed. He was hanging around Gotti a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I gotta get this nigga on my record before, and I gotta, I gotta do a song with this before this nigga blow up, you know what I mean? And um, I hit my boy Casey Khalil. I don't know if you heard of Casey Khalil. 
Mm-hmm. He, he do a lot of beats. Khalil, he do a lot of beats for okay. uh, yeah, everybody in the industry. He did last time I checked, too. Shout out to my nigga Casey Khalil, but he linked it up. He linked it up. He linked the feature up. And uh, when I walked up to uh, ESTG, I told him, I'm like, bro, look, you know what I mean? I'll fuck with you. Woo-woo. I'm like, he like, man, I got you. It's good. Da, da, da. Bam. We knock that shit. We go to the studio, knock that shit out. That nigga one take the verse off the dribble, like straight through, like you know what I mean. And he just did a, a feature before that, so he like, and I watched him one take that shit too. So I'm like, oh, this nigga, this nigga the truth. This nigga's the truth. You know what I mean? But I'm about to get that video knocked out the way. You know what I mean? Immediately. But shit had got hectic because right after he left. Um, right after he left um, Vegas, you know what I mean? I kept, I had them niggas, they was taken care of when they came down, you know what I mean? But um, I had them, uh, as soon as he left Vegas, his partner died. His partner got knocked down. And um, the, like the last spot he was in was Vegas with me, you know what I mean? So I'm, I was giving him space on the video, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Hold on, hold, like you know, just backing up. He just lost one of his best friends. After that, um, nigga, the price went up because he just got that 750, yeah. and I'm like, oh no, nah, okay. You know what I mean? The street nigga, you know what I mean? Nigga, got nigga, him at a good time though. Yeah, it just you know what I mean? Like it's no hard feelings. You know what I mean? I, like I respect it. You know what I mean? But you know what I mean? As men, as men, you know what I mean? We we we. Niggas got to keep their word, and you know what I mean. From what he told me, I know once I see him face to face, he gonna he, he gonna keep his word. But me going through everybody else, you know what I mean? It's just like, man, like. But he definitely went up after that 750. So I watched I watched his career. I didn't know his career was gonna rock it like that though. It rocked it. You know what I mean? As soon as he dropped that that 750, I knew. I knew he was going to blow up because I liked, liked his music, but as soon as that 750 hit, that nigga was pew. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how it is, you know what I mean? You know, nigga get broke off like that, what you expect? Yeah, you feel me? for sure. Is that going to be uh, on your next project? Yeah. In the Trap I Trust? Yeah, In the Trap I Trust. You know what I mean? It's either, I'm doing either In the Trap I Trust or Purple Heart in the City. Um, that's going to be, that's definitely going to be my single coming off of that um, album, you know what I mean? Coming off of that album. I, I keep I keep doing songs for my album, like, for, yeah, for my tape, and, um, like, I do another hot song, and and I ask everybody, like, they like, oh, no, you should put this on it. You should put that, you know what I mean? Because it's new, so I'm right now I'm just picking through the songs right now, you feel me? Mm. It's a good problem to have, having yeah. too many good songs. Yeah, 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 They're having too many good songs. I like to pick from, I like to pick from like at least like 20, 20 to 25 records, you know what I mean? Go through those and try to pick a good, you know what I mean, good vibe. Like before I used to mix trap with the West Coast shit mm-hmm. and then, but I learned that it's better to, to make your shit sound right just keep it all one, you know what I mean? It's good to hit all different uh, varieties of music, but like this this tape, I'm gonna come straight West Coast, you know what I mean? Like I'm I'm pretty versatile, I sing, you know, I harmonize, I ain't gonna say I sing, you know what I mean? But <laughs> harmonize and shit, hooks and shit, and um, you know what I mean? I'm gonna just keep it straight West Coast, right? Cause we don't get enough, we out here, we don't get enough love. Like on the West Coast, we listen to everybody's shit. LA, LA, we listen. And like I could vouch, I could say in LA, cause you know what I mean. I live in LA. We listen to everything outside of LA. You know what I mean? But it's so so fucked up. You come out here, and you come to um, like New York or something, or you know what I mean. They don't spin our shit like that. Like y'all wouldn't know. Like, you know what I mean? Y'all wouldn't know who 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 out here, y'all wouldn't know really who Rucci is or anything like that. Even though Rucci hit the, you know what I mean, came over here. Yeah. But as far as the Atlanta scene, you know what I mean? And Rucci not that big, I'm just giving an example. I'm just saying, 
like um what's my nigga um oh three flow Wale the Sensei. Okay, y'all man. wouldn't know y'all wouldn't really know his his shit down here and over there he's booming. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like it's just you have to I feel like that's what I'm saying. You have to come over here and put that work in down here. Cause they not they kind of buy I mean gonna say bias, they just we don't. stuck in our ways. Man. Yeah, that's really what, what it is. Stuck in our way. Yeah, you know what I mean. But over there in LA, we spend uh, we we know more Atlanta shit, and we gonna know our West Coast shit too. You know what I mean. But we we don't we don't discriminate. Like not discriminate. We just don't. We our ears is not. We ain't blocking that shit out. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean. Like down here, they probably be like, "Fuck that shit, I don't know, put this on." You know what I mean? Like, fuck. Yeah, if it ain't like, got like that yeah, trap like, sound, it's yeah, like, like, like y'all don't know who, uh, y'all don't know who this is, y'all don't know who that is, y'all don't know who Draco is. Uh, they, they probably Draco big on the West Coast. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They probably don't even, you know what I mean? Certain motherfuckers don't run into like Draco. You talking about Drake? Like no, <laughs> like nah, like nah, nigga Draco the flu flammer. <laughs> You know what I mean? The flu flame, no, like, you know what I mean? It is what it is, though, like, but, like, G Perico, too, like, mm-hmm. niggas. He's dope, man. Yeah, he's he's hot. He's cool, you know what I mean? But it's just so fucked up that all we got over there is, you know what I mean? We got California, we got Vegas, Phoenix, Portland, Seattle, you know what I mean? Um, mm, Shit, that's it. You feel me? And Portland really ain't got a, a music scene. They fuck with the Bay. You know what I mean? Um, Seattle and shit. They, they Northern California shit that's closer to Northern California. That's who they fuck with. You know what I mean? And then we we fuck with the Bay and L.A. and Phoenix. They they really ain't got no music scene. So really, only only thing that's coming out of the West Coast is like mainly from California. So that's why with me being from Vegas, I like we, it's motherfuckers in Vegas don't stick together. Like we don't, out here you motherfuckers stick together. It's unity in y'all community. You know what I mean? And we we don't stick together over there. It's all these, you know what I mean? Extra shit like, oh no, fuck that nigga. Instead of motherfuckers seeing the big picture, Boom, like if we push together, we could, you know what I mean, we could yeah. get in, we could get in. When Atlanta pushed in the door, them motherfuckers, y'all motherfuckers kicked the door in. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not talking, like, I've been a fan of Atlanta music since Outkast. So, you know what I mean? When that nigga got up there and said, the South got something to say, you feel me? Like, he made it known, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, they was pushing the South. He didn't just say Atlanta, yeah. Atlanta, you know what I mean? Like, we, we need more. We need more community uh, unity out there, like, and that's the only way we're gonna be able to push, especially in Vegas, especially in Vegas, like. And then the casinos don't cater to hip hop either. No, not at all. Like, if I feel like if 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 the casino, if they if y'all had casinos out here, man, every fucking casino I have a headliner, <laughs> headliner hip hip hop. You feel me? Yeah. Out here, you figure I mean, Vegas just doesn't want that type of crowd. Yeah, huh? like you see them like kick um, Meek Mill out to Cosmo. Like they, they just you know what I mean. They just don't like cater into hip hop. Like we got probably, we probably got three, three, three casinos that have upcoming. Um, like I'm gonna say res- residencies and shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ross at Daylight or whatever. And, well, he switched over to Dre's. You been to Dre's? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's. Does everyone be at Dre's? Yeah, everybody be at Dre's. That's our biggest. There. That's our biggest club. But like, we need five of those. Cause if it was in Atlanta, you motherfuckers would have Dre's. Then you have nigga, the neck Flamingo would have a, a rapper there. Like it's just. I don't know why Vegas is like that. It's just fucked up. You know what I mean? I don't. They kind of they don't understand that hip hop is is the biggest genre of music. Yeah, you such a mean? big market too, man. Yeah, like, and they and they they rather you know put some bullshit up there, like just because they don't want the crowd, mm-hmm. and the crowd is the niggas. You know what I mean? They don't want too many niggas in one spot, 
on the strip, scaring away the money. It's all about the money at the end of the day. But as far as Vegas rappers and shit, we need to stick together to push. Like, you know what I mean? No, that's real. All right, dude. So you got any last words for your fans? Any shout outs you'd like to give before we wrap it up here, Mo? Mm. Shit. Um as far as like what fans, what you mean? Like my up and coming projects, um, are my projects that's out, what you mean? You know, just anything you want them to know before we wrap it up, man. Um, go download Westside for the win. You know what I mean? That's my tape with uh, my brother Tony Omop. He incarcerated right now, free him. You know what I mean? Um, get ready for um, In the Chop I Trust. <laughs> that shit should be dropped by December. You know what I mean? Um, I got a tape with Yada. Yada, my boy from MMG. Um, I got another tape with my boy Tonio. And um, shit, really shit. That's it. You know what I mean? If you, if you, if you. If you take this music shit serious, rappers follow your craft, you know what I mean? Invest your money in yourself, you know what I mean? Don't have a lot of yes men around you. And if you take this music shit serious, it's your drink treated. Never lose the love for your for the art, you know what I mean? Motherfuckers see the money and, and, and lose the love for what they do, you know what I mean? Like this is, I have a love for rapping. I like rapping, I like hitting the stage. That's why I was so hyped when I went on Wale tour, but never lose the love for whatever you do. If, nigga, if you flipping burgers, nigga, and that's what you, you like to cook, nigga, always remember, nigga, put love into what the fuck you doing. Like, you know what I mean? Just, just the, that's always gonna be your main drive, y'all. You know? your, your main drive is gonna be your love for your art. Mm, so don't let the money, take over that ever, you know what I mean? Ever. And that's about it though. All-term money, ATM. <laughs>